we got another clutch. And uh, what a, what I want, I don't know how many more of these I'm going to do where I just show off the clutch as the hatch. Uh, but essentially, this is clutch number three. So what's up, YouTube? We got another video we're going to be making. We got a clutch number three of baby bearded dragons that we're going to be taking pictures of today and recording as I talk about what they are. This clutch hammered me, hammered me on the sex odds. Um, there's still one egg left to hatch. We don't know if it's going to hatch. Obviously, we can only assume that it's going to hatch because it's still sitting there. This clutch was a clutch of 21 eggs. We have 16 babies. Um, 15 babies plus one egg, so we have 16. If everything hatches, that is going to um, come out. But as of right now, we have one female. Now, how does that happen? Every single egg, it's not supposed to be 50-50 for the clutch, right? The way it works is every single egg has a 50-50 chance of being male or female. What happened here is every single egg ended up on the 50% chance of being a male and I only ended up with one female. So I'm not going to be able to hold back anything out of this clutch. Uh, as of right now, I don't think anything's going to be hold back from this clutch. But um, yeah, so here's the pairing. The pairing was my male Zeus. He is a Hypotrans Leatherback Thunderbolt or Genetic Stripe. It's just a really straight genetic stripe. It's called Thunderbolt. Now, a lot of the reasons why I'm making these pairings is to prove people wrong. So clutch number two, it was a color stripe to color stripe. Um, I ended up with genetic stripes. There you go. I proved somebody wrong. People were saying genetic stripe was a morph. It's a genetic. It can't be genetic if it's line bred. Um, if I can take two animals that don't have genetic stripes and produce genetic stripes with it, that's not something that's genetic. That's something that's just reproducible based off pairing animals by selective breeding. And uh, selective breeding is one of those things that we do with all kinds of things. We do it with chickens, we do it with dogs, we do it with horses, everything. I mean, the Derby's coming around. I'm in Kentucky, so we're talking about selective breeding. That's a lot of what happens in Derby. People breed the fastest horses to get the fastest horses. Supposedly, that's how it works. Now, same thing happens with bearded dragons. So, selective breeding is not really going to produce anything that's a genetic. It's going to, um, obviously, unless you're doing selective breeding to, to reproduce Something that is a genetic, but in this case, with genetic stripe, it's not going to reproduce anything that is a genetic at all. It's just something that it has a look. So things that are a look in bearded dragons that are reproducible, but are not necessarily a genetic. Tiger bars is not a generic, genetic. Uh, genetic stripe, not a genetic. Phantom stripe, not a genetic. Um, so it is what it is. Now, there's other people like... Back when I started out doing this, there was people that were breeding for short snouts, which is the worst thing you could breed for. It's like breeding for a French bulldog um, to have, you know, smushed in face. I have a Frenchie, so I can't. Oh, don't come at me like that, all right, y'all? Uh, or breeding for, you know, a pocket bully, something that's this wide and this short and looks like a pit bull. Like, that's just, it blows my mind people are doing that. But that is essentially what happens here is... Um, People do selective breeding and then somebody says, oh, well, I'm reproducing it. It's a genetic. Can't be a genetic. Uh, because if if it is a genetic, let's say it is a genetic. And genetic stripe, let's say it's an incomplete dominant. If it's an incomplete dominant, then my male, Zeus, which is a genetic stripe, if that was an incomplete dominant, that would be a super genetic stripe, correct? Which is in, in, it's not correct, right? Because that would mean every single baby in this clutch would be a genetic stripe. And as I'm going to show you, every single baby in this clutch is not a genetic stripe. But how is that so? He's a super genetic stripe. He's not. He's just a genetic stripe that's at the point of selective breeding that the genetic stripe is so straight that it causes that look. So let's talk about the babies, see what we got. Oh, I didn't even tell you about the female. The female is a hypohep trans. She is no stripe whatsoever. She's just a nice hypohep trans. Um, and that's it. So now, now let's go look at the babies. Now we're going to run through this pretty quickly because there's not really many combinations here. But first here we have a hypo trans male and he's gone.
So first we have a hypo trans male, and um, he is not a genetic stripe. So there you go, first one, not a genetic stripe, maybe a color stripe or so, but not a genetic stripe. Let's go look at baby number two. And like I said, we're gonna run through this pretty quickly because there's not really a lot of combinations here. There's no dunner. Um, and leatherback is just another, yeah, we're just gonna run through this. I don't wanna make a super long video this time. So here we go, baby number one. Baby number two is a hypo genetic stripe. This guy is actually pretty colorful. I don't know how well your camera's picking it up, but he's actually pretty colorful. He's nice red already. Can't wait for him to color up later on and see how uh, how he compares to his mom and his dad. But um, super nice. Baby number two. Baby number three is probably the least colorful dragon in the entire clutch. He is a hypo leatherback. Um, that's it. There, I mean, the stripe is pretty nice, but it's not a genetic stripe. It's not even a color stripe. It has, it's kind of broken up. So super nice baby. He might color up more than his siblings. You never know, but there he is. Let's go look at baby number four. Now we're going from the least colorful to the most colorful. This is one of the most colorful babies in the entire clutch. This guy here is a hypo trans genetic stripe. Super nice. I love his look already. I don't really want to hold back any males, but you never know sometimes. Sometimes you just end up holding back a male and I don't know. Maybe I'll hold him back for uh, Azazel, my hold back from last year, the Hypo Leatherback Dunner color stripe. We'll see. I don't know. Super nice, though. I'll decide before the video goes up. And uh, when I edit the video, it'll say he's a holdback or not a holdback. So there he is. Baby number five is a Hypo Leatherback Genetic Stripe. He's pretty nice. Now, I know you saw the picture of the mom. The mom is actually, she may not be as colorful as you may think, but uh, whenever these babies color up, they always color up super, super well, um, at least from her. I've never, the, the babies that I've seen from Zeus, um, they were a collab, and um, they've colored up really well too, but the collab was with a, a yellow genetic stripe or an orangey genetic stripe. So there's this kind of been all over the place, but this one, I have a feeling that these are going to be really nice and uh, really orange and red when they get older. Let's look at baby number six. Now, baby number six is another one that I've debated about keeping. So it's between baby number three and baby number six here. Um, we'll see. I kind of want to see after the first shed and he's gone. But uh, we'll see how he develops and uh, that'll determine whether I keep him or not. Where are you going, bro? But let's go look at baby number seven now. Baby number seven is the only female in the entire clutch. She has a hypo trans genetic stripe. And uh, just like her brother number three and number six, she is actually really colorful. Only thing is, I don't like having translucent in a lot of my females. And as of right now, I already have two or three females that are translucent and um that obviously makes it hard to figure out what males i'm gonna pair with her because some of my males are translucent as well so it's just a little bit more difficult that way and uh but she is nice i just don't think i'm gonna keep her let's go look at baby number eight baby number eight is yet another hypo genetic stripe leatherback super nice can't wait to see these people these people these dragons after their first shed <laughs> Yeah, let's go look at some peoples after they shed. No, nah. baby number eight. Let's go look at number nine. Baby number nine. Let me move this tag. So y'all can see the number. Baby number nine is a hypogenetic stripe. All of these babies that are not visual translucent are het translucent. I'm not sure if that matters to anybody. But um, he's pretty saturated already. Most of his colors are all the same color so i won't ever have to wonder what his stripe will look like because it'll probably blend into the rest of them let's go look at baby number nine, 10. now this little firecracker he is baby number 10 a hypo leatherback genetic stripe and he's actually really really 
really vibrant already for being this small. Can't wait to see how he progresses, but he's going to be super nice. I can have a feeling. I have a really good feeling about this one. And just like baby number 10, baby number 11 is also super, super vibrant. And he's also the same genetics. He is a hypo translucent or hypo leatherback genetic stripe pet translucent. There he is. Baby number 12 is just like the other two. 10 and 11. He is a hypo leatherback genetic stripe pet trans. There's actually a lot of the leatherbacks in this clutch. Um, so it's kind of weird, but um, baby number 12. Let's go look at number 13. Maybe number 13 is a hypo, just a hypo. He is uh, pretty colorful already for his age, being just that he hatched, but uh, super nice already. Let's go look at 14. Baby number 14 is also another hypo, but this one is a uh, color stripe or genetic stripe. I don't know. We'll see how it progresses, but... Um, it looks like a genetic stripe. It's just not really straight, but this is baby number 14. We'll see how he changes as he sheds over time, but he is still pretty nice. I have a good feeling about all of these babies. Obviously, some look better than others, but I have a good feeling about all of them. Let's go look at 15. Baby number 15 is another hypotrans genetic stripe. He also is very vibrant. There's a some really nice dragons in this clutch. I'm not going to lie, but I'm kind of disappointed that there was only one female. But it is what it is. It's just how the odds played out for me. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? So if you made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace.